should you, could you, should you, would you reblock a block that doesn't set up quickly, that doesn't set up completely, is not dense enough? If a block fails, can I reblock? And are there any blocks that you wouldn't reblock? Um, mm. You've you've asked the wrong people because what, what's a failed block? I, I don't know. It's been a while. Yeah, uh, there's work every time. But hypothetically <laughs> speaking, yes, hypothetically. <laughs> should you? Could you? Should you? Would you reblock a block that doesn't set up quickly? That doesn't set up completely? Is not dense enough? What do you think? What do you reckon? I suppose it's the first thing. Depends on the situation. So, I've always said there's like 20, 30 minutes between a good block and a bad one. So very mm. often, I'm just going to put the patient off to sleep. I want to keep the case running, the day going, um, and I'll see what the patient is afterwards. And if I have to, I would hopefully they'll be comfortable in recovery. It's a lot. I, I agree. Yeah, it's a lot of wisdom in that. I think you know. I, there's, there's, um, you know, you got to pick the hill you're going to die on. And I, I think that if to to wait and wait and wait, reblock, touch it up here and there, just to get surgical anesthesia, it is a bit of a fool's errand sometimes. And, yeah. I, and I think, uh, I there's, think there's, there's there's no shame in, in, in LMA and some. And most of the time, that's when there's very very few patients yeah. where I'm going to go okay, I don't want to give any sedation and I want this only to be regional anesthesia. There yeah. might be some dramatic right heart failure and ejection fraction and single figures and um, I really... You're typical Duke patient. Yeah, uh -huh. ah, <laughs> the typical Duke ambulatory surgery case. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, uh, uh, so those are, those, those are ones, make, those are very few. So often I'm just going to put somebody off to sleep. Yeah. yeah. See, see how they go? See uh -huh. the block kicks in at the end? Is it... Is it analgesia grade? Can it? Can you get by with that, or do you need? Do you need to do something else? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then, so what's your approach if you get to that point? Wake them up, and they're, yeah, they're they're feeling it. They need to get something else. I so I'm thinking here from the question: Are there any t any blocks I would not do again? And mm. probably I can't think of any peripheral nerve blocks that I wouldn't I wouldn't redo. Um, again, it's. It's going to be me. As the patient's 45 kilograms, have I maxed out the local? Do they have a low serum albumin? Do they have renal failure? I'm probably going to be more cautious. Um, but yeah. if it's now, after the case, three or four hours had passed, they weigh 260 pounds and, you know, um, they're otherwise healthy, yeah, I'm probably going to go and go, go. All things considered, I'm going to go ahead and do it. And, I, and I'm trying to think of there any... No, does anybody have any ideas? Any that you wouldn't do? I think I'd probably reblock. Maybe not the same place. Sometimes there's an infraclavicular that I might try an auxiliary. Mm. You know, see if we've got more luck. Yeah, yeah. Don't try the seven hour again. I'll take the mashy niblick. <laughs> <laughs> That's a golf joke. Um, it's funny, you know, when you and I trained before ultrasound, there was the, the answer was much more clear. You, you you wouldn't or shouldn't block afterwards because you couldn't get a motor response if you're blocking more proximal or you wouldn't get a patient response if you're blocking more distal and they, you wouldn't know if you're intraneural when you're doing a landmark-based technique or, or a nerve stimulator-based technique. But now, you know, ultrasound has changed all that and, and so I don't mind going anywhere else along the brachial plexus or the sciatic nerve or wherever, um, mm -hmm. you know, in combination with nerve stimulation and sometimes injection pressure monitoring. To, to make sure that even though the patient can't feel what I'm doing or I may not be able to get a, a motor response, I'm, I've got other monitors in place. So published evidence that it's safe or that it's dangerous, I think there's a limited case series from the Mayo. Mm. And, you know... I've heard of that. And good friends there, Becky, Adam and, and others, you know, who are brave enough to publish their failures... We're going to snigger yet and go. We bears never fail. <laughs> oh well, but uh, it's, so they 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 published a three blocks and they could show no damage came to patients, no increased incidence of nerve injury by reblocking it in a limited series. Now the numbers aren't enough to say it's safe, but this case series they published where they had to reblock or they did reblock, there didn't seem to be any more damage. 
It's reassuring for sure. Yeah. yeah. But, but um, so that that lets you know it, it's it's safe. But yeah, I, I probably wouldn't go to the same place. I'm always going to watch my total dose of local. Um, but yeah, I think I'd probably go ahead and uh, I go ahead and do it, and I, I do it. You know, at the occasional times I've got to yeah. help out other colleagues. It never happens to me. It just happens to folks I work with. <laughs> the, <laughs> the other nice thing is you can, you can pick and choose, right? So if you if you've done a proximal brachial plexus block and it, and you've just lost the ulnar part and you're not you have you haven't got that completely, you can pick that off either in the axilla or you know further down the arm. So mm-hmm. um, lots of options. Lots of options. Yeah. yeah. So I think reblock. Two of us are yes, we yep. do it. Stay safe. Yep. Bye. You did the wave that time. I got it. I always got to do the wave at the end. You did the wave. <laughs>